Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at the latest puzzle by Fistimafel. I saw this came out at the weekend, um, but at the weekend I was a bit under time pressure and knowing Fistimafel, this could be a long video. And in fact, I have read the comments on Logic Masters Germany about this and they're along the lines of absolutely brutal but amazing. So this should be very cool indeed. It's called Whispering Night. Uh, it's basically a cross between German whispers and sort of chess Sudoku. And uh, yeah, I'll read you the rules in just a moment. A couple of things to mention first. Mark and I planned to attempt our first live stream of the return of the Obra Din on Thursday evening. So Thursday evening, 10 o'clock UK time. We would love to have your company as we embark. I think it's some sort of detective um, game. I'm not, I'm not actually sure, um, but it's been recommended very heavily to us. So I don't know, you'll have to decide which of us is Lestrade and which of us is Gregson or Holmes and Watson, if you prefer your duos of that nature. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to having a go. Um, the other thing to mention, of course, is this incredible um, pack we've got uh, at the moment. Here we go. The Paint by Numbers Institute, which I'll let you in on a secret, is Panthera and the Asylum have created this incredible series of puzzles for our November monthly reward on Patreon. And as a teaser for that, we've released these bonus puzzles they've made, where basically you can have a go at these for free right now. Um, and the great thing about Japanese some um, Sudoku puzzles is you always get a picture out of the grid if you finish it correctly, as I have found to my cost. When you get a whole load of mess in the grid, you've probably done it wrong. Um, anyway, do have a look at these. And of course, the, these are probably a bit harder than the ones in the pack for November. Um, but there is this puzzle here, not an alarm clock. Uh, is a 16 by 16 grid and if you do manage to finish this then dm the asylum over on our discord channel and you'll win an award and i know some of you did that yesterday so very well done now let's get on with fist and fell's puzzle the whispering knight and i'll read the rules so we've got normal sudoku rule supply digits separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit so imagine this cell here was a one if this was a chess knight, it could jump to those eight cells there. Therefore, none of these eight cells can be a one in this puzzle. Obviously, if it was a two, none of them could be a two, etc. Just don't put the same digits with a knight's move of each other. Um, now, the green lines, what's going on there? In fact, this one's also blue. Oh, I see why. Okay, so we've got adjacent digits along a line in the grid must differ by at least five. So this is the German whispers rule. So... If this square was a three, then this square here would have to be at least five different. So this square would have to be eight or nine only. Um, so just make sure adjacent digits on the line are differing by five. Now, I imagine the reason that this, this line's been multicolored is just to make it clear that this line goes from this cell to this cell and not it doesn't sort of dip down to the corner here and then jump up here. And you can sort of appreciate that because if it did do that and if it was meant to join those two cells, well, there would be a simpler way of doing it than doing it in that rather strange way. You could do it like this. But anyway, extra clarity award goes to Cracking the Cryptic today. Do have a go at this. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I will say, if this is the first time you've ever watched a Cracking the Cryptic video, do not be surprised if you have a go at this puzzle and you cannot do it. Fistimafel is not known for his um, for, for gifting easy puzzles to the world. Fistimafel sits in his study, I imagine, surrounded by tomes, enormous um, sort of shelves full of books and surrounded by Chesterfields and an enormous partner desk. And he sits there and he broods until he comes up with magnificence. Um, so with that scene set, let us have a look at this. I mean, I'm tempted to start with this green line here only because if I was setting one of these puzzles, I would I would explore sort of, you know, shapes that looked I wouldn't explore this shape. I mean, what? What on earth is that? That's sort of half a moth from Silence of the Lambs. Um, 
Yes, it does remind me of half a moth from Silence of the Lambs. Um, this one looks more interesting. I'm tempted to look at these two cells first because I know that the these two cells... Oh, I was about to get excited there. Um, yeah, in fact, I think I've hit the jackpot because... Yeah, I have hit the jackpot. Good grief. Right. Let us describe the properties of a green line in this puzzle. Not generic green lines, just in this puzzle. It's a German whispers line. So if every digit has to differ from, the, from its neighbour by five on this line, there are two things we need to appreciate about that. The first is you can never put a five on the green line. And that should be fairly obvious. If you put a five on the green line, you're going to have a lot of difficulty with the next digit because it's got to be five different. So it's either zero or a negative number or it's 10 or above, neither of which is oh, neither. Neither of those are going to work. Now, the next thing we need to appreciate is once we've realized we can't put five on the line, each digit on a line is going to be one of a set. It's either going to be a one, two, three, four digit or it's going to be a six, seven, eight, nine digit. And that the line is going to alternate. So the line, in some sense, has a parity. It's, it goes low, high, low, high, low, high, or high, low, high, low, high, low. It goes one of those things. Now, once you know that, let's look at this cell. Let's make it blue. And ask where it goes in this box. Well, because the line alternates parity, you can clearly never put the same digit next to it next to itself on a line it definitely won't be five different so we can immediately eliminate these two from being blue we can eliminate those three from being blue by sudoku this is a knight's move away from blue that's a knight's move away from blue so you're only left with two cells which have an opportunity to be blue but this one if we think about let's imagine this is a low digit we're going to go high low high low high so this is the wrong parity to be that digit. So the actual only place this digit can go in this box is there. Now, is it symmetrical? Yes, it, it is symmetrical. So this, yes, it is, it is symmetrical. Sorry, I just had a brain brain blip there where I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but it is. What's this digit? Well, where, where does it, this digit here go in box one? Not there and not there by knight's move. It's not the same parity as those two. And because of, well, let's let's work out, let's imagine this was a low digit, high, low, high. It cannot be. These digits are not the same because they don't have the same parity. So this square also ends up here in box one and therefore it is also blue. And we are often running with a little bit, we haven't had to use Silence of the Lambs yet. We've just had to use our brains. So, what does this mean? <laughs> We've got a given digit. We've got a, well. I think you're going to have to have a given digit in this puzzle because otherwise it's going to be ambiguous whether things are uh, whether the puzzle, you know, without without differentiating the high digits and the low digits somewhere, the puzzle would have two solutions because it would it, you could just swap the low and the high digits around. Um, hmm. five in box two can't be on a green line so it's not there and it's not there so five is in one of two places no okay so I suspect what we're going to have to do here is to think about we might have to I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we have to think about. I I think, I feel like it's going to be the interaction of these two lines somehow. These little lines are all sort of disambiguating lines is my theory at least. So there must be something we can appreciate about, maybe about the moth. So Let's just think about the parity of this line. Whatever this is, is the same as, well, the parity is the same in this square, this square, this square, that square. So those have all got the same parity. I 
don't really I was thinking about highlighting that and saying you know having one color for one parity and one color for the other parity but the problem with that is I've sort of already gone down the route here of highlighting cell logic rather than parity logic I think we'll so we'll hold off on that for a moment we might have to revert to it I'm not sure whether what I'm meant to do is to sort of consider cells like this. Yeah, it's not, this cell is not as powerful as its equivalent neighbor here because this cell, if we look at where this cell goes in box two, we can eliminate those by virtue of the knight's move and Sudoku. So we get, we get rid of the cross. This cell has the wrong parity. This cell though has the right parity because look, there's a, it would go low, high, low again. So it could be the same as that one. It could be the same as those two. So that cell doesn't look as good. Let's just check this one. Um, get rid of the cross because of the knight's move constraint. That's got the same parity. This square has the same parity as that one. Bobbins, I think that has the same parity. Yeah, it did. That, I remember that, that those are the ones I highlighted, isn't it? I highlighted those three and that one. Bother. Okay, let's try the other line. Uh, this one, um, where does that go in box two? Well, this one has diff different parity to blue, so it's not in the blue square. It's not there by night's move. It's not there by night's move. It's one of those three squares. So those squares there are equivalent. And we must be able to get have these all got the, no we must be able to get rid of one from this domino because it won't have the right parity oh but we don't know what this parity is yet we know it's not blue one of these cannot be true by parity if we could get if we could prove this one was different from those two we would know it had to go here. Uh, you see, what we're going to have to do, I think, is we're going to somehow have to relate the parity of these two lines to each other. I don't... I know that this one... Yeah, if I could lock... Oh, I can't. In fact, I was just about to say if I could lock blue on this line, then I would know the parity of this line relative to the parity of this line. But but blue actually sees the whole of this line because of the knight's move constraint. It sees that square. So there's no, we know there's no blue on that line. And that doesn't help us at all because we don't know the parity. Therefore, we are not going to get any information from blue on the parity of this line. Oh, this is a dreadful start. Sorry. Um, let's try this one. So this one here is, can't be there, can't be there, can't be there or there. So, so it's the equivalent of that, isn't it? It goes in one of those three squares. And make that one yellow as well. Ah. Ah. Got it. Got it. Right. Yes, I have got it. Look, the when we highlighted this green line, look at the half moth, the silence of the lambs line, we, we said that, that several cells had the same parity. It was those. And now we know one of those cells is definitely yellow. So we now know, now we do know the parity of this line. Yeah, this is beautiful. Isn't that, doesn't that mean I know what, this digit has the same parity as yellow. This digit has the same parity as yellow and therefore must be in a cell that sort of alternates in the same way that yellow alternates, which looks like this one is a good bet. But it can't be that one. That's the wrong parity. And it can't be that one. These two both have the same parity as blue. That's beautiful. So now we know... But now we know this is orange. It's the only place orange can go. And therefore we know orange goes in one of two places in row three. 
Yellow is now locked into the top row in box two, so yellow is in one of those three cells. Yellow, yellow can't go there because that would be adjacent to a cell that has the same parity as yellow. That's not that's not yellow. So yellow's locked in a domino. This is ridiculous. Uh, at the end of end of row two. Right, let me just think about this. So blue, which we know can't appear on this line, has the same parity as this cell. This cell and this cell. So this is a, right, this is huge. Those cells there are all different digits for sure, because they're all in box two. And they all have the same parity. So they are either one, two, three, four, or they are six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe that's why this six has been given. Is there some reason that none of these can be? Well, those can't be a six. That can't be a six because one of the. Oh, this is this is ridiculous. Right. OK, I've got it. I've got it. It's ridiculous, as usual, from Fistemafelt. Right. We need to consider this little tetromino here. And we need to ask the question. Well, we know that this is either a set of one, two, three, four, because they all have the same parity or it's a set of six, seven, eight, nine. Now, this six here tells us these cannot be six. So the question I want to ask is, is it possible in this puzzle for either of these two squares to be six? Well, that can't be a six. Why? Well, because the digit that's adjacent to six on a German whispers line is always a one because it's the only available digit that's five away. So that means you've got to put one in both of those squares, which won't work. So this one can't be a six. What about that one? Well, if this is a six, again, we have to put ones in those two squares, but these are a knight's move apart and that won't work either. So this doesn't work. You, we now know for sure that blue and these four squares are low digits. And we might have to think about, I'm just worried about, f oh no, I see. Yeah, I was about to get concerned about four in the same way, but because the six was ruling itself out of this domino, hopefully we can put four in one of those two cells because we know we can't put it here because the logic won't work in the symmetrical way to why six didn't work. Four requires double nine. Four here requires double nine and knights move apart. So those two are definitely not fours. So four needs to go, if four can't go there because it would be nine double nine in those two squares so that's not four so this needs to be able to be four that one there so it's got to have yeah it's at the end of the line as well this is why this works wow wow so nine goes here <laughs> um okay is that good <laughs> um might be I feel like it's definitely progress, isn't it? It's huge progress. We've got a one, two, three triple now. I know these squares are all high digits. I know that one and that one can't be nine. That one could be nine, but nine could also go. So nine's in one of three places now in box, um, box thingy thing. This square is a high parity digit. That square's a high parity digit. So these, these have to be six, seven, or eight because uh, this one, this one can't be nine. Six here would require. Oh, hang on, that can't be six because that would require well. Let's think about it. If this is six, this requires double one on the on the German whispers line. But more importantly, that's a six as well. So that would require a one here. And this one sees no, both of those squares. So there's simply no way that's a six. So actually, where does the six go in box two? I'm now wondering. It's not there. It's not there. 
It's not it's not here because that would require double one in those positions, which doesn't work. So six. Oh, this is gore right, this is this is more gorgeousness. Where does six go? Well, it's got to be in one of those two squares where it meets its friend the five as a pencil mark. So that's a five six pair, which means there's no nine in this domino, and that square there is a nine. Ah, oh, this is... right. <laughs> now, now is 9 yellow? No, because 9 would... If that's a 9, it's a knight's move away from itself. So that square there must go in that square, not that square. So this square is not, not yellow, definitely. So 9... I'm now wondering if I need to give 9 its own colour. Is that a sensible idea? It might be. Um, I will. I'll get. I'll make it purple. So there's a purple digit down there, and this square and this square are the same. That's got to be. Yes, and it's a seven or an eight, isn't it? This square can't be six. It can't be nine. So this square is a seven or an eight. So this square, which is the same parity as 7 or 8, so it's it's got to be a 6, 7, 8 or 9. It can't be 7, 8. That square's a 6 or a 9. This square's a 1, 2 or a 3. That square's a 1, 2 or a 3. No, this square's not a 3. If that's a 3, those two squares have to be 8 and 9 exactly. Because, well, they're dead well. The other way of seeing is that you definitely can't put 7 in. If this is 3, you cannot put 7 in either of those cells because 7 is only 4 away from 3. There is a knowledge bomb from Cracking the Cryptic that is correct, not like the one I read or announced yesterday where I, I mixed things up in my brain and my mouth talked while my brain moved on. So apologies if you really do think that 1 plus 2 plus 4 does not equal 7. It does. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, we, we at least we have a start here, don't we? But what do we do with this start to make more progress? There's got to be a 3 in one of those cells. So this digit, that digit there looks to me like it has to be in one of those two cells in box one. But we don't know which one unless I'm missing a trick there. What about that one? Hmm. Oh, what about that one actually? Where does that go? Because that's low parity and it sees those two. Ah! Yeah, this one is low parity because it's it's not a high number, it's adjacent to high numbers. So this is low parity. Hang on, let me pick another colour for this. I don't want to put orange next to red. Um, can I make this one grey? Grey is a bit of a dull colour, but I think I don't want to put I don't want to put red next to there, so don't really want to use green on a line either, but depending on how complicated this gets, we may have to use all the colours. We shall see. Anyway, so this square here, where does it go in this box? We know it's got to map to a low digit, so the only cells available are those three. Well, those three are all seeing this one because of the knight's move constraint and Sudoku. So this square is the same as this square. This square is a one, two or a three. This is gorgeous. We know that grey is not the same as blue because it's in the same row as blue. So that must map up there. And now can't I revisit this square? I can indeed. <laughs> oh, bobbins. I'm going to have to use red, aren't I? Oh, well, never mind. So those two squares are now red because red has to appear somewhere in here. Uh, and it's clearly not in any of those cells. So it must be here. So this is a one, two or a three. One, two, three, triple now in column two. One, two, three, triple in row two as well. That's a bit less surprising. Um, okay. And 
now you know now I'll tell you what I'm noticing I don't think it's useful but I'm noticing this square sees a 5 and a 6 and a 1 2 or a 3 so that square there can only be 4 oh I was about to say 4 7 8 or 9 I've forgotten it it can't be 7 or 8 because it sees 7 8 in the box so that square is 4 or 9 let me check that 1 2 3 can be 4 can't be 5 6 7 8 yeah 4 or 9 can we do that maybe not um, one two three there's definitely a four in one of those three squares and a five that's not a four because it would be a knight's move away from its friend that's not a five for the reasons we've already talked about okay so now we're really now we might be getting stuck because we fully pencil marked both are considerable green lines. We've done the sort of geometric one. We've done the Silence of the Lambs one. I know one of those three squares is red. Can I get more joy with anything else? Perhaps not. Oh dear. Um, So we might, we might actually, and this is a bit daunting to be honest. Ah, yeah, I've got something. Right, that square. Right, that square there sees lots of low digits. It only, it only doesn't see, it see, because this square here sees that one by Sudoku, these two by Knight's Moves. So if this is a low digit, it has to be a four. But it's not a four, because if it's a four, what do you have to put on its line? You've got to put a nine there and the nines would be a nice move apart. So this is a high digit and it's not nine and it's not six. So this is seven or eight. But we don't know whether it's yellow or orange, but we therefore know this. Ooh, we know this square's grey. That's absolutely ridiculous. Because this square cannot be four, because then it would have to be, it's not five away from this square. It's not blue and it's not red by knight's move. So it must be that one, the other one. So that's one, two or three. It's grey. Grey goes down there. Grey. <laughs> grey is fixed in box five because where can it go? It can't go there because it's a knight's move away from itself. So it can only go there. That gets us another digit on a German whispers line. Grey. Oh. Well, no, okay, grey is in one of those two cells, just by Sudoku. We don't need to use the knight's move to say it can't be six. So this is a high digit that's a, ah, that's a seven or an eight. I see. Oh, this is cool. And now that tells me the colouring of my seven eights, because this seven eight is not yellow. So that must be orange. That must be yellow. Now yellow in this box, perhaps yellow is locked into one of three places. Orange has to be in one of two places in column four. Okay. And now we stare again. Um, hey, gray is attached to two colors. That doesn't work. Right, clever. Okay, more classic Vistamafel. How could this square? Oh, this is gonna be gorgeous. This is, I've got, I've got, I know the three. I know which color the three is. Right, look, these two squares here, both, they attach to a seven, eight pair. So if I make these squares threes, both of these squares now have to be eights, but they can't be eights because they're in the same box of the Sudoku. We know these are different. So these cannot be threes. And if gray is not three, I can get rid of three from here those two as well as well I've now got a one two pair which means this square here is the is is the three that square is the three the three must be next to an eight and a nine on a line that's eight so those eights this is seven that's seven that's seven so eight is in this domino Seven is in one of those two squares. I realize I don't really need to pencil mark, but I, I will find it. It will be important if we need to use the German whispers logic. So 
forgive me for doing that. Um, hmm, okay. What next? So I've got a one two pair here, one two pair there. Oh, maybe maybe this column is where we should look, is it? I've got to put one, two, and five into these squares. So it would be really nice. So if that's a five look, you'd have to put a five up there. <laughs> that doesn't work. Right. Can you do that? No. Because where do you now put the five in box eight? Well, you've got to put it on this X shape. But that's both, they're both German whispers lines. You can't put it here because it's a knight's move away from itself. So they are not fives. Um, well, that one might be, but this one definitely isn't. And if this one isn't, we can colour it. It must be blue because it's definitely not grey. So now, oh, I see. So now, oh, now blue is on a line down here. That's interesting. Blue, blue's in a domino in, in box six. There must be, okay, so there's a five, so this, this pair here is a five gray pair. There must be a six in this domino exactly because there can't be a six here by Sudoku. So if that was a six, we'd know this was a six. Hmm, okay. Um, So, what does this mean? That's the next challenge. I don't know is the answer. I'm trying to, I keep trying to pick up from these German whispers whether there's another obvious win um, in terms of, I mean, I can see this square can't be a six because it would map onto those squares and ruin their ability to be sixes. And it can't, it can't be seven. There's a seven in one of those. So if this is high, it's eight or nine. Which looks reasonable. If this is high, it can't be seven. Again, that looks, that looks okay, doesn't it? Oh, if that's a three. Ah, how's that? Right, how is this ever a low digit? The answer is it can't be, because if it's a low digit, you can't put that low digit in this box. Because obviously this can't be a one or a two, it sees one and two, so it would have to be a three or a four. But if it's a three or a four, you can't put it in any of those squares because of the knight's move. And it would need to go in one of those squares because the rest of the digits are not three and four. So that's high. That's enormously powerful. And what do we say? It wasn't, it wasn't six or seven, so it's eight or nine. Ah, Ra ah. oh, nearly. Well, this can't be one or two, because it sees <laughs> this one by Knight's Move, that one by Sudoku, so that's three or four. Ah, beautiful. Right, and that, what I should have done is to thought about where four goes in the central box, because four can't be here or here. So there's a four in one of those two squares, and that means this square can never be four because it would rule out the ability of those squares to be four. So that's three. That doesn't tell us what this is. But three is red. So that's red. Three now needs to find a home in this box. So three is in one of those squares. Three is in one of those squares. Probably I should color those actually just to be consistent. Four. Ah. Ah, yeah, okay. This is, I think, important. I might colour fours as well. I'm running out of colours to do this, but I'm going to have a go. If I make four green, four in box five has to be in one of these two. So four has to be down there. Now that looks like a triple to me. I've got three colours. I've got purple, so I've got nine. Four, which is green, and 
uh, orange, which is seven. So this is a four, seven, nine triple is my belief. So what does that mean about those three squares? I don't know is the short answer. I know that, oh, I know there's a blue down here. I know, oh, I know one of them is an eight because these eights are looking down here. Do I know anything else? Ah, is that a naked single? Of course it is. Of course it is. Look, now I've got, look at this column. I've got a five, six pair, a four, seven, nine triple, a one, two pair and an eight. So that square can only be a three and therefore that is not a three. Sorry, that's probably been there for ages, but I didn't spot it. So Maverick's flying past outside. Hello, Maverick. How are you? I'm in a jolly good mood because I'm doing a fist fell puzzle. Right now, and I haven't yet got really badly stuck. Um, so now I've got a four, five, six triple here. So now these squares are, well, the selection of digits available for these squares are a one or a two, which has to be down here because it's the blue one. A three, which can't go there. An eight. That's it, isn't it? So it's, we know that we know for sure there's a three and an eight down here. So I should color those two. We know for sure there's a blue down here, but we don't know whether that's a one or a two. And we know for sure there's an eight down here. I can't remember if I said that already. Um, we've got this funny X thing here as well. So what's the X doing? Ah, oh, that's absolutely ridiculously beautiful. Right. God. It's just amazing. Every single puzzle by this guy is just full of these moments of absolute incredulity. Right. How could either of these be an eight? That is the question I want to ask. The answer is you can't put eight in either of these. And the reason is quite unbelievable. If you try and put eight in either of these squares, let's try this one just for the sake of argument. If this is an eight, what do you put in this cell? Now the answer is not four. We know it's got to be a low digit. It's not four because that's not five away from eight. It's not three. There's a three in the column. So it's a one or a two. But more specifically, it is a blue one or two because this square is gray. So you have to put a blue square here. But now look at this. Our blue, we, we know that there's a blue in one of those two. It's got to be here now. And there's got to be a blue there as well. So you get double blue in the row. And that logic's symmetrical. So if you, if we do it the other way around, <laughs> this make this an eight, that's going to be a blue and that's going to be a blue. And that also is wrong. Isn't that beautiful? So that means we can get rid of eights from the, we can place the eight. We can place the three. Wow. That must be blue. So hang on, what, what color is, that one is yellow and red for that one. That square now has to be an eight or a nine. Ooh, nearly. That square has to be high and can't be eight. So that square is six, seven or nine. It's not six, it's C6, that's seven or nine, <laughs> nearly. Um, Okay, and this is blue, so that's not blue. Right, we've got to be diligent about doing our pencil marks here, haven't we? Yeah, we do actually. 
we do actually and we've got to be diligent with using the digits that we've just learned about two things to note here firstly less interestingly where does three go in box nine it can't be a knight's move away from itself so three is locked in one of two places only i think so there's a red in one of these two secondly this eight where are we actually going to put eight in this column now that's a good question because it's not here it's not here it's not here because of this eight it's not there by knight's move so it can only go there i think so that's eight therefore it's yellow um eight can't go there can we do any better than that so eight in this box boom boom not there i think one of three places which is disappointing. I was hoping that might actually win us a bit more, a bit more ground. There's an eight in one of these cells, and okay. And now we've got to pause for breath and have another think to ourselves about what's going on. And we're getting into a problem here, by which I'm thinking that we've very nearly used up all of our whispers lines and that is a worry because <laughs> well hopefully it's obvious why it's a worry um, because after we've used all the whispers lines we're just going to be left with a knight's move sudoku and this knight's move Sudoku doesn't seem to me to be very easy to solve. Um, at least not at the moment. Seven maybe in that box. No, that's not good. Seven's in one of three places, I think. We're getting a very, very kaleidoscopic rainbow infested grid here, aren't we? Um, So cells that I think are weak. Well, I've already looked at this one. That cell's a bit weak because it sees four, seven, nine. You, if you make this square four, seven or nine, you're ruining the ability of those digits to appear in this triple. This actually can't be one, two or three either. So this only has three options left. And what, uh, one of those is a six. Oh, <laughs> right. One of these is an eight. That's absolutely evil. Right. This square is a naked single five, is my belief. I'm going to double check it. One, two, and three ruled out. Four ruled out. Five, I think, is possible. Six is impossible. Seven's ruled out. Eight's ruled out. Nine's ruled out. It is a five. That ruins the ability of those cells to be five. So five in this box now. Five in this box is almost restricted. But I don't think it does tell us these digits. Ah! Right. Oh, goodness me. Okay. So I think we're going to have to play <laughs> Hunt the Thimble again for another weak cell. That was a good spot. I don't really see... don't see how to restrict this that can't be seven is this seeing lots of did oh is that oh no i thought i thought for a moment this was a one or a two not this one but this could be a blue one or two as well so in terms of if this is a low digit i know it's not gray i know it's not three but it could still perhaps be four it could be blue and it could be six i think i think it could be oh no it can't be six can it be nine i think it can be nine but only if that's a nine as well wow okay Good grief. <laughs> um, hmm. 
this one we know nothing about. And yet I think I have a feeling this one I'm going to have to do more in that box before I can, or this row of course, before I can get any further with it. So there must be some other cells in this grid that are restricted. What about that cell? Is that cell restricted? That cell can't be a 1, 2, 3. But I think it can be 4, can't it? Can't be 5, look. Um, I think it can be 6, perhaps. It doesn't seem to be able to be 7. It can be 8. Uh, it can't be 9. So this is an even digit, 4, 6, or 8. Okay. Don't... Oh, not, not 4, actually. If that pencil marks to be relieved, that's not 4. Okay, they we're down to 6 or 8 now. This is getting exciting. 6 or 8. Is there a way we can... Is there a way I can restrict that sum? I only have to get rid of one more. Um, right. Don't, I don't see how to do it. I'm going to have to look for something else. So... What's orange? 7. So that square can't be 7. Oh, I see, see, because of the... That square can't be, can't be, can't, uh, ooh, can that be low? No, ah, this square is interesting. It can't be one, two, three, or four. It can be five, I think. Can it be? Ah, I think it can be six. I don't believe it, five or six. But I think that's all it can be. It can't be seven, because it's C7. It can't be eight, nine of the row. So this square is five or six. And that is it. That is a little bit interesting, because whatever this is has to find a home in this box. And it can't go there, and it can't go there because of the knight's move. So those are the same digit, which is a little bit interesting. We're having to reduce ourselves to black now. So black's got to... Yes! Right, so black has to be in one of those three squares. Well, it's not five then, because there's a five here. So black has to be six. That is unbelievable. So now we've got a six in here. We've got a four, five pair. We've got a six in one of those. Um, let's put sixes into the... I've, I've, I'm, I know I'm adulterating and I've got like corner pencil marks and colours, but I'm, I'm going going over the top. But that six is seeing that square. That six needs to become black as well to make sure we're being consistent. Look, sees that. So that's eight. That's no longer eight. So this is nine, and that's no. That's therefore losing its colour. So eight. Eight is in this domino here. You might hear a little bit of children screaming. Apologies. It's screams of joy, I think. Um, hmm. So this is nine. Nine has a color. Nine is purple. So now there's a nine down there. So, but we don't yet know. If we could get rid, if we knew that eight was down here, we'd have a six, eight, nine triple which would at least be a little bit interesting, wouldn't it? Okay. So what, if anything, does this mean? Where does, actually, where does nine go in box three? Answer, only one cell, yes. That's another digit, it's amazing. But with puzzles like this, when you get one digit, it actually feels like a break, yes, it does feel like a breakthrough. Where does nine go in box nine? It has to go there because of the knight's move restriction. So that's that's another win. That's now not nine. Nine, nine in box one has to, oh, this is good. Nine in box one has to go there. So that's purpled. That means that squares a four, if I trust my pencil marks, and why would I not? Four is the color of green. So that's green. These two squares are now Oh, okay. Are they a five, six pair? Is that what we're learning? So, so that's not nine anymore. 
So 9 is now in a very small domino. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is so, this is so, so clever again. Right. Where does 9 go in box 7 now is what I want to ask. It's not though those cells by Sudoku. 9 is not the same digit as 5. Now, look, we've got three cells left. This domino contains a 9. If you put a 9 here, you can't put a 9 in either of those squares because of the knight's move. So we're down to this domino. But there's a domino for 9 here. So if I put a 9 there, I can't put a 9 in here. So 9 goes there on the German whisper. And the only valid digit now here is 4. The other digits are high. So we... and Oh, and this, this, this must be the blue now. So that's the blue. That's got to become purple. This has become a 4, which is green. That's not 4, so it's a 7, which is orange. That's... That was a 4, 7, 9 triple. So that's become a 9 and therefore retains its, its purpleness. Purples must almost be done, you know. No, that's a 9 by nothing more than Sudoku. That's therefore not purple and not 9. So this 4 sees this square. That's not, that's a 5. That loses its colour. And that becomes a 4 and keeps its colour. 4 in this box. Ah, oh, no, it can go here. It's getting a bit overzealous. Um, right, this feels like a huge breakthrough, though. Nines are done in the grid. Eights now seem to have to be there. Has that been like that for ages? Or did I just... I'm not sure. That might have been like that for ages. But I'm seeing it's looking at that cell, which can't be yellow, obviously. So that square must be an eight now, it seems. And I've just got a domino of eights left. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now I want to look at this square. Because what is this? Is What's the parity of this square? It's not six because it sees those both of those squares because of the knight's move. So it's not six. Is it seven? No, because that would rule seven out entirely from those three squares. It's not eight or nine. They're in the row. So this is low parity and it's one, two, three or four. It's not a blue. So it's something other than blue. And this square has to be six or seven because it can't be eight or nine. Now there must be a way of seeing that. If it was seven, it would be enormous. It would give us a seven here, a seven here, a seven here, a seven here. Seven in one of those. Seven would be placed. Ah, oh, the whole puzzle might crack, you know, if that, if that seven is correct. Now, how do we work out what this is? Well, we know it's not a three or a four here. Yeah, in fact, yes, let's use that logic. Let's let's note that this is a six or a seven. So this can't be high, a high version of a low digit because if it was three or four, this would have to be eight or nine. So this is a one or a two and therefore it's gray, great. So that's gray. That's not gray, therefore. So that's gray, and if that's gray, it's not five, and that's going to place the five in the box, which is going to have to be exactly there. Hmm, okay. I mean, that feels sort of important, doesn't it? What about blue, therefore, in this box? Blue is not here, so blue is either there or there but I think I might be wrong about this but I don't see that there's a way of, of telling which of those is correct um, okay so we need to come up with some more logic here don't we what about seven in this box can we do can I tighten up where it can go somehow Seven has to be in one of those two cells exactly. So this can't be a seven anymore because that would rule both of those squares out from being seven. So seven now, I've nearly done it. I've nearly done it, but not quite. Um, is there a way 
of doing this somehow. Three, actually, let's come back and look at three in this box now, because three has to be in one of those two cells, which in and of itself might not be interesting, but it does mean that can't be a three, um, which does place a three here, which means these two squares are not three, and the three goes in, and that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, I wonder if Fistemafeld did that on purpose. Um, I wouldn't put it past him. Right, okay. So, what now? There must also be a way. How are we going to differentiate the ones and twos in this puzzle? That's probably going to be by them being attached to a six on a German whisper line. And the only one they could be attached to is there. I wonder, is there something we can do with that? Feel on the cusp. I think we are, I think we genuinely are on the tipping point here with this puzzle. Um, can't be that many more. In fact, where does oh I was about to say where does where does the blue one two go in this column, but it has got two options still. So that's not the trick. We're gonna have to come up with something else. Where does where does seven go in this box? Seven is not in those cells. Seven is not here because that would rule it out of box three altogether. So seven is in exactly one of two places. But I think both of those positions look ah, there we go. I've got another I've got another small deduction. Um yeah, this square can't be a seven. So seven in box nine, I don't know where it goes, but it's definitely in column eight or column nine. It's in one of those three cells which is the same columns as the seven is appearing in box six. Now we know there are only two sevens in any, any correct Sudoku in columns eight and nine. And I know that those two sevens are in those five cells. So I can't add another seven to that mixture. That cannot be seven. And that's a seven now. And I think that might be interesting, not necessarily for the seven, but for the blue, because now, I've got the blues locked into column eight and nine in boxes three and six, so that can't be blue anymore. And that means this is blue. And that means that is not blue, good grief, because that's a knight's move away, so that's blue. And that means that's blue, and that's not blue. Wow, okay. And I think we've done all the blues now out of nowhere. So this column, needs fours and fives. Now that might be resolved by something. Let's have a look. It's not, is it? That's very mean. <laughs> That's very mean indeed. I don't think it's resolved. Bother. Um, there must now be a six in this domino. Yeah, well not domino, but those two, one of those two cells must contain a six in this box. So that goes with this six and places a six in one of two places um, in box nine. It's getting very close to cracking, isn't it? It's still not quite giving us the goodies. Um, okay, so we've got to find somewhere else to look. Where shall we look now? What more can we do? So there's a green up here. This square here is only five or six, but I don't think there's a five or a six looking at it, even using the Knight's Move ability. Um, I like referring it to, to it as an ability, actually, a Knight's Move ability. Um, now that square, is a six or a seven only, just looking at the logic of this row. But again, it's not quite seeing enough, is it? 
it can rule it could rule a seven out from that one, but not that one as well. So we probably have to think a bit harder. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure, as you can probably tell, where it is we're meant to look next. Can we do anything? Almost certainly what I've done is to miss a knight's move restriction somewhere. But it's easily done in these puzzles. It really is. So we're going to have to think a little bit. Well, and hopefully, eventually, I will stumble across whatever it is I'm missing. Um, is there some reason... Or, or the other thing I could be missing is a way of disambiguating the ones and the twos because that would be very useful. This row needs fours, fives and sixes, doesn't it? But I don't see why that can't be anything. Uh, it can't be five, I suppose. So the five in this domino down there. Not quite good enough. Four, five, six here. Sorry. Um, four, five, six here, but again, I don't have the fours, the fives, and the sixes are fairly annoying. Hmm. Okay, four, six, and eight. So this square can only be four or six, because it can't be eight. That square can be four, six, or eight, I believe. I think that's true. That square can be four, six, or eight, can it? Okay, and I think that's true as well. Ah! Okay. Oh dear. So, <laughs> oh no. There must be a way of doing this somehow. What is the way of finishing this puzzle? Is it going to be to do with the sixes, the threes? Um. Maybe I should, maybe I've got to literally go through the digits. I'm not going to go through the ones and twos though. I think all the ones and twos are placed and therefore they can't, oh, although no, I've not done grey in this box, I've just noticed. All this box, oh, that might be it. Yes, yes, that's it. Where does grey go in this box? It goes here. Please interrupt something. So now grey in this box goes here exactly. Wow, I can see one thing that's doing, but let me just, let's just hope it's actually going to do enough work. What it's doing by coming into this cell is it's shifting the seven into one of these cells. Therefore, this cannot be seven, and this is the seven in box thingy. Now that means that's, aha, uh -huh. yes, I've done it. Right, now, the seven in this box now has to go here. That means it's not here. And that seven, look, is looking at this square. It's forcing it to be a six. And this is what I was hoping for. Not only can we remove that color. So is six got its own color? No, six doesn't have a color. Naughty six. It forces this to be one, disambiguating our ones and twos. And it gives me a seven here. Um, so that's and that gives me the red, which gives me the red here. Let me just pause here and take stock because I'm going to enjoy this next bit. Right, so grey, grey ones and twos. Can I, I think I have to go to colour and highlight all of the greys. They all become, oh, hang on. I wanted them all to become ones. That didn't work. Um, they're all highlighting now, so they can become ones. Now all of the blues have to become twos like that. Now, I suppose that's not really going to advance me much further, is it? Because we knew, basically, that once we disambiguated them, they were just going to fill in and not really impact too much on anything else because the only whispers line they were affecting was this one. Um, but this six is giving me a seven here, which is the last seven in the grid, I think. So that loses its ability to become that digit, which was six. Yeah, so that's a six in the corner which doesn't have a song associated with it, but still, yeah, that's a four over here now. So that must be five. Four did have a color, that was green. So this is no longer four. 
four oh okay rather annoyingly it does look like oh yeah where does four go in that box now it can only go there yeah this is nice this six has given me that one that's eight so that's eight that's six now i need to color up I need to tidy up some of the colors now um that can't be that color anymore that's got to be a write-in. That's a five, which is uncolored. That's a five. That's a six. Six does have a color. That's meant to be green. Uh, six is meant to be black. And we've got five. We should have fives. Um, what well, is five the only uncolored digit? Sorry, I'm getting confused with my own coloring now. I think maybe that's true. So this square here is a four which is lovely. It looks like it's working, doesn't it? And that means that's a four, and that means that's a five, and that five, yes, is disambiguating this square, which is now a six, six, five, five here, uncolored, four here, colored. Six and six get their own blackness. Should just have fives uncolored. I think this is correct. I don't think I did anything wrong and I didn't. Wow. Wow. That was fantastic, wasn't it? It's ridiculous. I mean, as always from Fist of Mafel, um, it's like you're seeing into the mind of just a stone cold genius sitting in his study, surrounded by books, probably reciting the Raven every few minutes and coming up with these <laughs> weird, weird and wonderful pieces of stunning stunning logical genius it's just amazing amazing the fact that you can disambiguate this entire puzzle from a six here and these paltry lines and that the logic is so innovative and crisp this what was going on with this the fact that this eight couldn't go in there was so clever honestly and the fact you could disambiguate this line just from knowing that this square had a parity. <sighs> Blown away, as always. Let me know in the comments how you got on with it. I hope you finished it. And um, yeah, I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>